Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, right. Well, thank you. Uh, my name's Dan Smith, uh, and I am a private investor. Uh, I went full time private investing in 2018, um, following a nearly 30 year career in uh, insurance at Lloyd's of London, handling fine art insurance and valuable commodities. Uh, and I started investing initially, probably in the late 90s, in the in the large cap space. Finally, sort of moved over, saw saw, saw the light, and moved over to the small cap space in about 2010 2011 and uh yeah so so uh, and today i would like to talk to you about a company called westminster security group uh listed on the uh, lovely a market in london with a ticker of wsg a uh, tiny little market cap in comparison with some of the other companies that i've seen presenting today of, of 12 million pounds and a share price which is at an all-time low currently of four pence so i will move on um I just thought I'd ask a sort of rhetorical question a little bit to start off with, uh, because this sort of is woven into the fabric of my investing journey. Uh, you know, as an investor, should you ever return to the scene of a crime? And by that, I mean, um, you know, if you suffer a big loss on, on a share, is it one that you should ever go back to? Because in the case of Westminster, it's something that I, I have done because... Uh, I initially invested in it, I think, in 2011, 2012. Uh, they'd, they'd recently signed a large uh, managed service contract in, in Africa, in Sierra Leone. And there was talk of a, a much larger one coming down the pipe. I think the, sh the share price at the time was about 20 pence. And uh, so I invested around 2025, 20, carried on going up. The, the, the sentiment was positive. It, it nearly touched the pound. I think it got up to 95 pence. Uh, this, this contract didn't materialize and it went down and down and down. And there's a, there's a chart that you'll be able to see later on which sort of shows you the, what's happened since then. But it got me thinking, sort of preparing this, you know, is, it, should you ever return to the scene of a crime? So I'm, I'm still... The jewelry's still out. We'll see how we get on. But uh, that, that was my sort of question of the day. So the next slides are actually slides that were produced by the company uh, in a presentation that they've prepared. But it gives you a good kind of description of what they do. So they're a security company with, with two divisions. Uh, the, the first division is the technology, technology division. And that, they basically provide equipment and service equipment to airports, to ports, to other other buildings or companies that, that need things like scanners, um, you know, x-ray machines, that sort of thing. Um, that, that side of the business, as you'll see later on, has, has grown quite steadily. And I suppose you could consider it the bread and butter stuff, which isn't going to set the world on fire, but it pays the bills. Uh, the other side of the business, which is probably much more exciting, is the managed services business. And they are typically quite long-term contracts, 10 to 20 years, um, so they're guarding ports, guarding airports. And what's unique about this is that it's actually the, the, the in, in the case of the airports, it's the airlines that are paying for the service. So per passenger that goes through an airport, the airline will pay whatever they pay, 10, 20, 30 dollars. It depends on the nature of the contract for Westminster to basically secure that airport. So in a lot of these cases, these airports are in fairly underdeveloped parts of the world. So they're going to be in certain places in Africa, maybe some places in the Far East. So from the governmental point of view, it's a positive because they get basically their, their you know, they get Western top class security uh, and they don't have to pay for it. So it's a, it's a bit of a win. And, and it's the same with the ports, you know, the, 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 the cargo uh, is, is basically paid for. And, and, and this is very high margin business as well. So, so um, right, we'll move on to, the, uh, sorry, also on the managed services side, there's, uh, they, they, they also offer training as well as, you know, the actual guarding itself. So this is where they have a footprint. So it's, it covers a lot, of, a lot of the world, as you can see there. And they've got offices in those six countries mentioned there. Sierra Leone is where they've currently got their, their one airport contract. 
and Ghana, they recently, over the last couple of years, they signed a, a port contract there. So they've got offices in both those countries. Uh, this slide just gives you some sort of headline figures there. Uh, some of the sort of target customers are government facilities, transport hubs, banks, financial institutions, et cetera. Um, got overall market 44 billion anticipated by 2024. Uh, for the seaside of things, so ports and harbours, ferry and cruise terminals, etc. Um, and they, they're talking about container forecasts of annual growth 4.6% to 2024. And then, then for the airports, they think that it's going to be more than double, uh, you know, going 8 billion passengers moving around by 2039. Um, so some of the uh, highlights of 2020. Um, they, uh, the one that I'll concentrate on there is, is the 1.5 million five-year contract to provide security screening and equipment and other services to the, to the Houses of Parliament. So, uh, you know, it's a decent sized contract in itself, but I think what's more important probably on that one is if you're going to some of these far fun places, if you can say, you know, we've got the contract for the UK Houses of Parliament, you know, that will probably give, you know, hold some weight, hopefully. Um, so strategic activity in 2020, a um, couple of things to pop, pop on there. Obviously, COVID was a was a massive problem for everybody. I mean, especially for Westminster on their managed services side, because there were less people traveling. Uh, the cargo side was hit as well. So the managed services side was did struggle. We'll come on to some numbers later on. But the, the, the actual tech sales side, so the technology side, it actually did pretty well compared considering the nature of, uh, of you know what, what COVID did to it. Um, another point at the bottom there is that they had a convertible loan note, which was getting converted at uh, a discount to the to the VWAP, which was basically killing the share price. Um, and because every time they got any momentum, the, the convertible loan note would get converted, the shares get sold into the market, and it, it just it, it, it sort of it put off people from buying. So that was uh, as part of the placing they did in December for five million pounds. That convertible was was taken out. Uh, so the numbers for 2020 and 2019, uh, they managed to maintain their their turnover pretty well, considering the effects of COVID. Um, they reduced their loss. Um, so, you know, I think it's 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 a, there's some good foundations to build on going into uh, into the current year. Split in revenues, uh, technology side, you know, to manage to increase up from from uh, 5.4 to 5.6 in 2020 is, is no mean feat, I think, given the fact, you know, how difficult it was to, to interact with people over that year. So I think, you know, had, had uh, COVID not come along, I mean, that, that, that being said, we, you know, COVID in a way, it was a bit of a double-edged sword because of the nature of the equipment that they sell, they were selling probably a lot more fever scanning equipment than they would have done on a normal year. So it was, there was some mitigation there, but I think the technology division would have probably done uh, maybe not seven million, seven and a half, eight million, something like that without, you know, without COVID there. And obviously the managed services side there, as you can see, it's gone down from 5.5 to 4.4 million. Um, which again, you know, given the fact that the passengers weren't traveling, you know, it's not a disaster. Um, so again, it's something good to build on for the, for the forthcoming year. Cash position, um, they raised, as I say, they raised 5 million in December. Um, so the uh, cash is now in, in a positive and the borrowings have been reduced from 2.5 to, to, to 0.6. So the, oh, sorry, I just need to move these slides now. Um, so they've managed to consistently uh, grow their, their revenue uh, up until the last year, um, which is which has obviously been uh, positive. You know, I think 2020 would have been hopefully up to the kind of 14, 15 million level had had things gone as normal. And hopefully this year we, sh we should be looking at something like that. Uh, the, so what's interesting about this slide is it shows the operational uh, gearing 
um, and the fact that the, the, the administrative expenses are fairly fixed, uh, despite the revenue going up quite quite significantly. Geographical split. So, as you say, with Ghana and um, Sierra Leone making up most of the managed services revenue, that's why there's 42% of the income coming from Africa, um, and then a, a reasonable even split everywhere else. Um, but it's interesting, you know, we, we're UK listed, but most of the income actually comes from, from elsewhere in the world. So uh, there's a pipeline that's in a, a subsequent slide, which basically shows uh, the, the, the managed services uh, pipe uh, opportunities that are coming up. Um, they've confirmed that all of these opportunities are still live. So we're still, uh, we're just waiting and happy for a while on on, on the next uh, large contract to to drop in, uh, and they're saying that the inquiry levels remain healthy. So this slide is effectively the showing the the the, the pipeline as things stand at the moment. Um, the the one that uh, we're all waiting on with bated breath is the the Africa Five Airport contract. Um, because hopefully that's going to be somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 million dollars revenue annual. So if you obviously put that in the context of the current total revenue of about 10 million pounds, you know, that's a pretty big deal. So, um, you know, that's, that's, that's really going to move the dial. So we are, as shareholders, all patiently waiting on that one. But there's plenty of other opportunities uh, that are also listed there as well. Um, in various different places and then you look at the technology division you know the each they mention each of these projects is worth more than one million pounds uh and all, you know there's, there's quite a wide variety of of different uh, contracts that are mentioned there so the risks um the obvious one is a failure to execute on a significant managed service deal uh we've obviously been here before i've been here before as an investor i've waited on an african contract it failed to materialize um so there is uh, you know I, I absolutely accept that there's a chance that that won't happen the the, the, the signals from the management are that uh, you know things are, are positive but until it is announced and signed uh who knows now where they operate Obviously, they are subject to certain things that you know we, we don't often see in Europe, such as e Ebola, uh, which they were particularly hit by uh, operating out of Sierra Leone. So they managed to keep the airport going, kept kept everything going there. But that was a particularly difficult time, and obviously, that hit their revenue because it, it's 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 done on passenger numbers. Um, so they've had their fair share of uh, black swan events, unfortunately. Uh, another concern would be that you know the cash gets eaten up and and it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of capex associated with any uh, managed service deal so that's something to to bear in mind uh, and I put on the bottom there you know an, an aging management team um, no obvious succession within there there's there's various sort of family members that are part of the management team but uh, that would be a slight concern a bit further down the line. So the opportunity, as I see it, you know, you've got a very low market cap at the moment of only 12 million pounds. Uh, the share price is a, a, an all time low of, of just four pence per share. Uh, they recently raised five million pounds at four pence a share. So it's, it's getting in at that place in price. Um, as we discussed, the, 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 the contracts are for 10 to 20 years, should they, should they get one over the line? Uh, so it gives some good uh, revenue visibility over that period. So that should be, uh, you know, taken positively. We've seen the large pipeline that they've they've, they've got, uh, and we've got a tech, tech division that's that's performing well, um, and I think will continue to 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 increase. Finally, uh, there's a there's a chart. Everyone loves a chart. So there's there's one for you. Uh, going back to the kind of first time the company listed which was in 2007 and uh, it, uh, it 
demonstrates perfectly the trials and tribulations of being a, uh, a Westminster Security Services uh, shareholder over the years. So uh, yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. So if there's any questions, please let me know. Um, Dan, just a quick one from me. Um, you know, as you say, most of their revenue is outside of the UK. Does it all yeah. get priced in US dollars? And then I guess, you know, looking at the strong pound or weak dollar, whichever way you want to read it, is that something to kind of bear in mind when you're, when you're looking at Westminster or how does currency really affect them? Yeah, it, I mean, it tends to, because of the countries that they operate in, um, generally speaking, it, it tends to be the, you know, for want of an expression, the poorer countries. So it, it, it tends to revert to the dollar. I mean, it's not exclusively that, but, you know, I think their business model is more attractive to those type of countries than perhaps some of the uh, the rich ones. That, that being said, you know, they've established a an operation in, in Saudi Arabia. So there is, it's not exclusively like that, but yeah, there is going to be some currency risk there potentially because ultimately their earnings for reporting purposes get transferred back into into uh, sterling. So there there could be, especially at the moment with the with the you know current potential currency swings that we're having. Because mm, I, ju I just quickly looked at a chart of the you know pound versus the dollar over the last year, and it's been uh, you know kind of an upward strength of the pound or uh, you know a weak dollar from all the all the the monetary stimulus that they're doing um, and then another one from me have they historically you know acquired many businesses throughout its kind of listed life or you know has this share chart kind of reflective of just a waxing and waning of the of the underlying business itself They've, yeah, I mean, they've had a few attempts over, they, ha they have acquired a few, a few bits, sort of smaller businesses, guarding businesses, that, that type of thing, but no nothing, nothing really that would, would move the dial. They've had a few attempts, and a few years ago, they had a, uh, uh, an attempt, uh, because of the success they had in Sierra Leone, they had a good, good relationship with the government there, and they were awarded a contract for a ferry, to operate a ferry over there, uh, which was, by and large a sort of unmitigated disaster really unfortunately it was just, just you know it just didn't didn't work um and so that kind of set them back and it, you know one of the challenges i suppose being a small company is you've got to kind of focus on specific things so perhaps you know and i don't know this but i would imagine while whilst they were focusing on doing the ferry maybe there was other opportunities elsewhere that could you know didn't get the attention that they deserved so so there, 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 there has been there has been some small acquisitions, but nothing, nothing of any significance. Mm. We've got a question here, uh, but I'm not sure of the significance. Um, the Iran U.S. relationship, um, you know, looking back at you know historical potential contracts, you know, is there is there something uh, with Westminster um, through that relationship previously? Yeah, there, that was that was so. This was another sort of um, incident of unfortunate timing, uh, where they they actually announced uh, a few years back. I mean, it was just it was just around around the time that Donald Trump got in, uh, that they had secured uh, an airport contract in Iran, quite a big airport contract in in, in Iran. Uh, I forget it was sort of twenty twenty five million dollars a year, something like that. Uh, but it was literally around the time when when the relationship with the West and Iran was deteriorating significantly, and, and it got to, it just it just it, it fell away. I mean, it's still the contract is still potentially there, and obviously with the kind of thawing of of, of relationships now and, and things changing under a different administration in the US, now there maybe there is a possibility that they could get that back on track again, and obviously that would that would push things along massively. I mean, some, something like that on a, on, a, on a market cap of 12 million would be, would be huge. But I, I, I don't anticipate that that is going to be the first piece of news we're going to hear about an airport contract on Westminster. I think uh, something, uh, something more in the, in the Africa region will be, uh, will be first. And um, in terms of when they're going up against these um, 
airport contracts or, or pork or any of these kind of large infrastructure contracts are they competing with larger players or are they basically competing on the in-source outsource model where you know the port operator or the airport operator the government is like looking at you know cost benefit of employing their own staff to do the work versus you know getting uh, an outside contractor yeah i think there's i mean in, in some in some of the countries you know you'll come up against a g4s or one of the big security companies uh in, in others there are probably there, there's a, there's a lot of kind of local firms i mean the, the benefit of, of of having a westminster or a g4s for that matter is that you're going to get a standardized um, you know training involved i think part of the issue is in some of these countries is that there's a lot of corruption that goes on and uh, you know it's not in any in the interests of some of the uh, individuals to to change that so it, it hence the procurement procurement of these contracts can take years in some cases because some in, in some cases you you know you've literally probably got to change the entire uh, regime at a reasonably high level and, and it's whether the, gov the governments themselves are are keen to do that um, so it's it's not an easy place to operate um, but that being said the size of the prize is and, and, and that kind of revenue visibility that you're going to get out of it is, is is worth it i think with 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 westminster as well the, the thing is with them is that they've there's been a lot of false starts you know there's an extensive pipeline there they need to secure another one of these airport deals and then it will be the the, the pipeline then suddenly becomes alive uh, until that point i think because it's been dragging on for so long um, people just don't believe the story so it's you know there's 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 as with anything there's risk involved but it's you know it's it's at the bottom of the chart it's at the it's at the bottom of its its share price ever the market cap's low they get one of these deals and it's and it's you know we're off to the races yeah it's um yeah and somebody said mentions here in the questions perennial land of performers uh, are flatters to deceive uh, or has done for for quite a while um, if we don't have any more questions, I think we'll just leave it there. But before we go then, do you just want to, I don't know if you've got a, a contact detail slide, if anybody wants to reach out to you, or maybe that was on your very first slide, if you just go back to it. Because yeah. oh, yeah. uh, yeah, I know so. your uh, Twitter handle is not uh, Dan Smith. No, no, no that's wrong. right. Just in, just in case anybody missed it at the at the start, if they want to reach out to you, um, Twitter is probably the the best way, I think. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Happy to 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 chat to anybody. But um, yeah, thank you again for letting me present today. So it's it's been good, and some of the the quality of the other present uh, presentations have been fantastic. Yeah, thanks for uh, yeah taking taking the time. At, uh, Bit of a random request coming in to present at a, at a summit, but yeah, I hope um, yeah, hopefully we can we, we can do more of these in the, in the future.